Good evening. This, the 114th meeting of the 71st term of the Baltimore City Council, is now called to order. Please turn off all cell phones or put them on vibrate. Tonight, invocation will be led by Reverend Rashid Ray, pastor of Emmanuel United Baptist Church. After the invocation, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor. Dear gracious and merciful God, the one of whom we know as God, Yahweh, Elamai, Jehovah, Allah, Jah, Abba, Krishna, the abyss, the unmoved mover, the amen, the almighty, the source, the hidden one, the creator, but we know you more importantly as our God. We, your servants, we come again calling on your wonderful name, and we just want to stop to tell you thank you. Thank you for life, for health, for strength, for keeping us alive. We thank you for warm blood that runs through our veins, for the activities of our limbs, and we're so thankful, O oh God, that you look beyond every last one of our faults, and you supplied all of our needs. We even thank you that it is because of you that we live, we breathe, and we are clothed in our right minds. Now, God, we ask that you continue to allow your love to abide. Abide not just for us, but for the man and that woman that are fighting the demons of drug abuse, poverty, hunger, and homelessness. Allow your love to abide for every young person, oh God, that is faced with, the, with little choices, no choice to no choices, with little options to no opportunities, with little help to no help. Allow it to abide for those families that have suffered the blows of death because of the principalities, the powers, and the rulers of darkness in this age. Allow your love to abide even now in this meeting as well as among your people. Allow your love to abide in men, uh, um, among the men and the women that ensure that our country and the streets that we live in are safe. It is our prayer today that through your love, that agape love, that every decision that will be made will be made for the things that are right and not for the things that are wrong. Allow not decisions that are, that are be allow not the decisions to be made tonight be not based upon the arrogance of man, but the eagerness to serve. Not based upon the propensity of man's nature, but the extremity of man's needs. Not based upon any party agendas, but a, a commitment to their constituents. More importantly, allow these decisions not to be, be based upon the desires to be reelected or elected to a higher office, but because of the desire to be, because of the desire and the need to ensure that Baltimore is not just a great city, but a safe city with much promise and prosperity in her future. Therefore, it is our earnest prayer that you will do for us what we cannot do, and you'll be who we cannot be and cause us to realize the trueness in the old hymn, that we should not be dismayed, whatever be tied, that you will take care of us. For it is beneath your wings of love that we do abide. You will, you can, and you shall take care of us. For it is your servant's prayer, amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I got you. I you. <laughs> want to thank um, Reverend uh, Ray for the invocation. Um, the clerk will call the roll of the members. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Kern, Henry Spector, Middleton, Mosby, Holton, Walsh, Fry Center, Costello, Stokes, Branch, Clark, Mr. President, we have a quorum. Today's showcase Baltimore presentation is Denise Merzinger of Suited to See. Let's give her a hand as she comes. Thank you for allowing me to showcase one of Baltimore's best kept secrets, Suited to Succeed. Suited to Succeed's mission is to improve the economic independence of women experiencing hardship by providing free professional attire, career development, and life skills training, as well as networks of support and tools to help them become successful in life. From serving 60 women in our first year, Suited has increased its impact and just within the last seven years has clothed over 10,000 women <coughs> and provided over 75,000 pieces of clothing. Originally founded in 1997, Suited reached another milestone in 2015 by increasing its reach to service university students and veterans by solidifying partnerships with Stratford University, 
Maryland Center for Veterans Education and Training, known as McVet, and Coppin State University. Our boutique and store is located right on Redwood Street, right next to Werner's, and ladies, we've got good stuff there, so you need to come check us out. One of our biggest fundraisers is called Sudapalooza. It's our biggest fundraiser, and we need your support. This year's 15th annual Sudapalooza will salute and honor women veterans and our suited angels. It'll highlight local restaurants, caterers, personal chefs, breweries, and vineyards. It will showcase a marketplace <coughs> featuring the works of emerging designers and artists and feature a fabulous fashion show. Suited to Succeed's board of directors invite you to celebrate the joys and reward of community service by becoming either a sponsor or attending our event, which is Thursday, May 26th. It will be held at the Baltimore Harbor Hotel <coughs> on 101 <coughs> West Fayette Street, and all ticket sales and sponsorships will directly benefit Suited to Succeed and all our hard work and efforts that we do helping the women of Baltimore. We're also very fortunate to have three honorary event chairs this year helping us with our event. Our Maryland's First Lady, Yumi Hogan, Baltimore City NAACP President, Tessa Hill Aston, and our chair of East Baltimore Community Corporation, Paula Johnson Branch. So on behalf of Suited to Succeed and the growing number of Baltimore area women who benefit year after year, we thank you and look forward to your participation and presence on May 26th. And thank you so much for your time today. And ladies, check out the store. There's good stuff. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It is the council custom to generalize the invocation act for a motion to generalize the prayer. Motion by Council Vice President Rod Singer, second by Councilman, Councilwoman Holton. All those in favor of generalize the prayer say aye. All those opposed nay, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted. We'll now proceed with the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the general proceedings from the March 14th City Council meeting is on the council member's desk. Is there a motion approved the journal? Motion by Councilman Kraft, second by Councilman uh, Kern. All those in favor of adopting the journal say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, the motion carried. The journal is adopted. Bill signed by the mayor can be found on page two of the agenda. Bills to be introduced. City Council Bill 16-0640, bond issue, affordable housing loan, $6 million, for the purpose of authorizing the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore to create a debt and to issue and sell its certificate of indebtedness as evidence thereof, thereof and proceeds not exceeding $6 million from the sales of such certificates of indebtedness to be used for the cost of issuance including the expense of engraving, printing, advertising, attorney's fees, and all other incidental expenses connected therewithin, and the remainder of such proceeds to be used for or in connection with planning, developing, executing, and making operative the affordable housing program of the Marion City Council of Baltimore. This has been the signs of the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 16-0641, <coughs> bond issue, school loan, $34 million for the purpose of authorizing the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore to create a debt and to issue and sell at any time or from time to time and in one or more series of certificates of indebtedness as evidence thereof and proceeds not exceeding $34 million from the sale of such certificates of indebtedness to be used for the cost of issuance, including the expense of engraving, printing, advertising, attorney's fees, and all the incidental expenses connected therewithin and the remainder of such proceeds shall be used for the acquisition by purchase, lease, condemnation, or any other legal means of land or property or any rights therein in the city of Baltimore and demolishing, constructing, and erecting on said land and property or on any land or property now or hereafter owned by the, by the Baltimore City Board of School Commissioners and or the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 16-0642, <coughs> bond issue, community and economic development loan, $45 million, for the purpose of authorizing the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore 
to create a debt and to issue and sell certificate of indebtedness as evidence thereof and proceeds not exceeding $45 million from the sale of such certificates of indebtedness to be used for the cost of issuance, including the expenses of engraving, printing, advertising, attorney's fees, and all the incidental expenses connected therewithin, and the remainder of such proceeds to be used for or in connection with planning, developing, executing, and making operative the community commercial and industrial economic development programs of the Marion City Council of Baltimore. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 16-0643, Bond Issue Recreation Parks and Public Facilities Loan, $45 million for the purpose of authorizing the Marion City Council of Baltimore to create a debt and to issue and sell certificates of indebtedness as evidence thereof and proceeds not exceeding $45 million from the sale of such certificates of indebtedness to be used for the cost of issuance, including the expenses of engraving, printing, advertising, attorney's fees, and all the incidental expenses connected therewithin, for the development of the buildings owned and controlled by the Marion City Council of Baltimore, the Enoch Pratt Free Library, public park and recreational land, property buildings, structures, or facilities for the acquisition and installation of trees for tree planting programs, including but not limited to the acquisition by purchase, lease, condemnation, or any other legal means of land or property or any rights therein in the City of Baltimore. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 16-0644, zoning condition use conversion of a single family unit to two dwelling units in the Art Zoning District, variances 305 East Lafayette Avenue. For the purpose of permitting, subject to certain conditions, the conversion of a single family unit to two dwelling units in the Art Zoning District on the property known as 305 East Lafayette Avenue, as outlined on Red and the Company Plat, and granting variances from certain lot area size and floor area ratio requirements. Sponsor Stokes. This has been the Science of Land Use and Transportation Committee. Resolution to be introduced. City Council Resolution 16-0296R, Faith, Maryland Faith Community Health Network, for the purpose of commending the local faith community, Sinai Hospital and LifeWords Health, and the Maryland Citizens Health Initiative Education Fund for their exciting new commitment to improving public health throughout Baltimore and the Maryland Faith Community Health Network. Sponsor Middleton, Henry, President Young, Holton, Scott Costello, Branch, Clark, Spector. Uh, please note that Councilman Kern, Councilman Kraft, Councilman Mosby, Council Vice President Ross Singer, Councilman Welch, and Councilman Stokes is co-sponsor. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Middleton. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And um, I also like to, would like to thank um, you and my colleagues, uh, Dr. Wynn from the Baltimore City Health Department, representatives from Sinai Hospital, LifeBridge Health, Health members of the clergy and other guests of various organizations. We had a, a press conference around 4 o'clock um, out in the lobby of council chambers, and it was uh, another press conference outside for a very important rally in um, saving our funds for our, our youth as well. But um, I'm here today to basically, this resolution is to commend the members of the local faith-based community, Sinai Hospital and LifeBridge Health and the Maryland Citizens Health Initiative Education Fund for the efforts to make Baltimore a healthier city through the formation of the Maryland Faith Community Health Network. And I also would like to thank and recognize, uh, while I'm going through this, uh, Vincent DeMarco, which is leading this Maryland Faith Community, um, community Health Network, and could you stand, uh, Mr. DeMarco? And uh, just to add, we uh, there's been many recent changes in Maryland's healthcare system, which has led to more collaboration across hospitals and communities. And health professionals want to work more closely with community partners to ensure that all of their patients' needs are met. Faith communities are national are natural partners in this work as there is a shared mission to care for the sick and comfort the dying. So this Maryland proposal for the Maryland Faith Health Community Network um, attempts to align efforts in the patient's faith and health network to help faith leaders deploy resources more effectively and efficiently and to more easily enlist timely appropriate support for their um, congregations. Uh, there is a 
Maryland Faith Community Health Network Memorandum of Understanding. So <coughs> any um, faith-based organization uh, for any cultural or religion can join this network and sign this Memorandum of Understanding. We already have 45 uh, congregations that have uh, signed the Memorandum of Understanding as of March 10th, uh, 2016. And again, this is an uh, initi initiative throughout Maryland, but so far the most signups have been with Baltimore City. So that's a, giving a sign that the um, faith-based community is ready to, to partner and network and uh, make our city a healthy, vibrant city. And um, we're just so thankful and again, thank you colleagues for joining in on um, commending this organization for moving forward with this effort. Um, I'd like to um, have this move for uh, immediate adoption. You want to suspend the rules. I'd like um, to suspend the rules, I'm sorry. I'd like to suspend the rules. Second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of suspend the rules for immediate adoption of this resolution, say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Most carried the rules suspend the chair recognize Councilwoman Middleton. Um, I'd like this resolution to be um, Second adopted. by Councilwoman Holton. All of the favor of adoption of resolution 16-0296R, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. Thank Chair you. recognize Councilwoman Middleton, I mean, uh, Specter. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I was impressed uh, at the press conference and uh, suggested, and I see that this is immediate adoption, so I don't know that we'll have any more uh, action <coughs> on this effort, but I did make a suggestion, Mr. President, members of the council, and to the lead sponsor that because this is such a, 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 a wonderful thought of body and, and soul, really uh, what is what it takes for healing, that I thought an extra resource in the faith community would be our parochial schools. And I wonder how we can make sure that they explore that. <coughs> I mentioned it at the press conference, but I didn't realize it was immediate adoption. Chair, recognize Councilwoman. And I uh, thank you, uh, Councilperson of the Fifth District. And that is a wonderful suggestion. And we also mentioned um, how KIPP Academy has taken an initiative, and they are the first school to have that Rails Health Center right within the school itself. So they're going to move forward with getting those health centers within the school and I'm sure this network can partner and again the um, it's partnering the the faith-based community to, in, in those efforts so again thank you all for signing on thank you you can find the consent calendar section there at the back of the agenda is there a motion to approve the consent count motion by councilman scott second by councilman mosby all in favor of approving the consent calendar say aye, aye. those opposed nay the motion carried and this calendar is approved. Chair recognize Councilman Mosby. President, I ask that uh, we suspend uh, council rules for f uh, floor pr privileges. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of extending this floor privileges to our guests, say aye. aye. Say aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The most current your guests may take the floor. And colleagues, standing uh, in front of you is Miss Destiny Hodgins. Uh, if we could all turn around, open up for Destiny. It's her day. Uh, if everybody can see Destiny, uh, last week I presented <laughs> an historic team for doing something the first time. Uh, well, That's today great. I present an historic individual for doing something in the first time. Destiny is the first female wrestler to qualify for the state championship in all of Baltimore City's history. So let's act like the Ravens just won the Super Bowl and give it up for our youth. Destiny is the first female in the history of this entire city to ever qualify for the state wrestling championship. And not only is she an amazing wrestler, Destiny is also an amazing student. She's on the honor roll and has nearly perfect attendance. Not only does she do that in the classroom, but she's also a leader. She's the captain of the wrestling team at Carver Vocational Technical High School. 
So Destiny and the athletic director and her family, as well as the coach, are here to celebrate her as we celebrate Destiny. And I would like to present you with the council resolution. Council President, if I'm you could come down. Come down yeah, you scared yeah. to come down? <laughs> so I'm going to say a quick joke. Destiny, uh, learn from my mistake. But when I was a freshman at Poly, I wrestled 103 weight class. That's supposed to be a joke, guys, because I weigh far more than 103 now. But <laughs> you guys missed the joke. So today, the City Council of Baltimore resolution, be it hereby known to all that the City Council of Baltimore offers its sincerest congratulations to Destiny Hodgins in recognition of your outstanding achievement of being the first female wrestler from the City of Baltimore to qualify for the Maryland Public School Athletic Association Wrestling Tournament. The entire membership extends best wishes on this memorable occasion and directs this resolution be presented on this 21st day of March 2015 by the President of the City Council, Bernard C. Jack Young, and myself, Councilman Nick Mosby. Thank you so much and congratulations. And we also have two other resolutions for Coach, Coach Dixon. There you are, Coach. The same resolution for you. And for the amazing athletic director, uh, Ms. Cynthia Tucker Tyson. There you go. It was only fitting. Uh, the principal has had several resolutions, so we don't have one for you today. <laughs> but thank you for all your work that you do at Colver, Principal Scott. Let's give her another hand. We'll now move the bills on second read of Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 15-0601, rezoning 609 through 611 South Carolina Street for the purpose of changing the zoning for the property known as 609 through 611 South Carolina Street as outlined in red in the company plat from the B12 zoning district to the M3 zoning district. Chair recognizes Council Vice President Ross Singer. Mr. President, this bill has amendments. Uh, the amendments are on my colleague's desk. I move the amendments. Second by Councilman Kraft. All those in favor of approving these amendments say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion to approve this bill is amended. Chair recognizes Vice President Ross Singer. Mr. President, I move the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilman Kraft. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. All opposed nay. This motion to approve this bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 15-0602, Zoning Condition to Use Parking, Open Off-Street Area, 1500 Fleet Street, and 515 through 531 South Carolina Street. For the purpose of permitting, subject to certain conditions, the establishment, maintenance, and operation of a parking open off-street area on the properties known as 1500 Fleet Street and 515 through 531 South Carolina Street is outlined in red on the accompanying plat. Chair recognizes Vice President Brian Singer. Mr. President, I move the finding of facts. Second by Councilman Kraft. All those in favor of approving the finding of facts say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion to approve the finding of facts are, are adopted. Chair recognizes Vice President Brian Singer. Mr. President, this bill has amendments. I move the amendments. Second by Councilman Kraft. All those in favor of approving these amendments say aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. The bill is amended. Chair recognizes Council Vice President Ross. Mr. Singer. President, I move the bill favorable is amended. Second by Councilman Kraft. All those, all those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Third reader for final passage. City Council Bill 15-0574, rezoning 1430 to 1444 Lawrence Street for the purpose of changing the zoning for the property known as 1430 to 1444 Lawrence Street as outlined on red in the accompanying plat from the R8 zoning district to the B24 zoning district. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Curran, Henry Spector, Middleton, Mills, Beholton, Walsh, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 15-0593, sale of property 225 North Franklin Town Road 
for the purpose of authorizing the Marion City Council of Baltimore to sell it either for private sale, or its interest in a certain property known as 225 North Franklin Town Road and longer need for public use and providing for a special effective date. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Kern, Henry Spector, Middleton, Mosby, Holton, Walsh, Rice, Sarah, Costello, Stokes, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 15-0594, sale of property 222 North Cavalton Road for the purpose of authorizing the Marion City Council of Baltimore to sell to the public or private sale, all its interest in a certain property known as 222 North Cavalton Road and no longer needed for public use and providing for a special effective date. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Curran, Henry Spector, Middleton, Millsby, Holton, Walsh, Rice, Aaron, Costello, Tons, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 15-0597, Charter Amendment, Subdivision Regulation, Agency Endorsement, for the purpose of correcting an obsolete reference to the Department of General Services to reflect and conform with the transfer of certain powers and duties from agency to the Department of Transportation is mandated by Charter Resolution 14-016 and submitted to and submitting this amendment to the qualified voters of the city for adoption or rejection. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Curran, Henry Spector, Milton, Mosby, Holton, Walsh, Rice, Singer, Costello, Stokes, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 16-0615, Open Baltimore City Open Data Program for the purpose of enacting an open data program for Baltimore City, providing for the implementation and governance of this program, providing for the continued maintenance of the Open Baltimore Web Portal, specifying the nature of the data sets to be published on this open data portal, stating certain disclaimers, requiring certain reports, defining certain terms, and providing for a special effective date. President Young, Kraft, Scott, Curran, Henry Spector, Middleton, Mosby, Holton, Walsh, Fry, Singer, Costello, Stokes, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. Committee announcements. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Urban Affairs and Aging Committee will hear City Council Bill 15-0580 on May 12th, 2016 at 3 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Uh, it's an ordinance concerning the Baltimore City Landmark List Exteriors, the American Legion Federal Post Number 19, which was introduced by Council Members Costello and Welch. Committee announcements. Committee announcements. Regular announcements. Chair recognize Council, Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> Mr. President, a couple of announcements. One, um, in the first oh, district, you. there have been a number of candidates forums for all of the folks that are running uh, for the first district council seat. Uh, we have a major forum on Thursday, March 31st. It's being sponsored by the Canton Community Association at 7 o'clock um, at Batch Church down on um, East Avenue in Hudson. Uh, it will be moderated by Jane Miller from WBAL. So those who are watching, uh, I know that church fills up pretty quickly, so you can go online to the Canton Community Association website and make your reservations to get into the, um, to that debate. The um, other thing that I would like to mention, Mr. President, is um, Margaret Barry, Peggy Barry, was a young woman that I started uh, school with in the first grade. And um, we went from the first grade through the eighth grade together. And then uh, she was my sister's friend um, for her entire life. And she passed away this weekend. Uh, she was a Waverly girl, went to St. Bernard's. Um, but she, many of you also know her brother. Her brother is Mike Baraka who worked here in the um, finance department and was over at Moet for a number of years. So uh, I would ask that we would have a, a moment of silence tonight for Peggy Barry. Right. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair Ignatius, Councilman Kern. Thank you, Mr. President. I know it might be a little soon to send some accolades out, but um, I read in the paper today that uh, Deputy Mayor Zaid, Khalil Zaid, is going to be moving on to El Paso, Texas. Um, I talked to him today for a few minutes by phone. Um, he's uh, been very good for the city, and he loves his city, and over the years, and I've had a relationship with Khalil since I've been in the council 20 years ago, because he was a project manager as an engineer for the Harford Road $7 million streetscape years ago. And when we had communities issues uh, about certain streets not being have access, you know, going northbound or southbound, and and the bump outs in Hamilton versus one travel lane. So we, um, we had a good relationship back in the late 90s when he was a project engineer. Obviously, he was transportation director for years. 
I had a relationship concerning all the towing issues that I've worked on over the years. And just recently with the, uh, uh, the snowmageddon and also uh, with the, uh, the recent snowstorms, um, I couldn't make it down to the snow room. Like my friend from the 14th District used to meet down there, but I would talk to him by texting and all, and he took care of my constituency through the last several snowstorms, along with Andy Smoyan. But uh, Cleo is going to be missed as our uh, deputy mayor, especially in the knowledge he has of public works and transportation. And El Paso, I don't think you get as much snow as we get, but um, they're going to be the benefit of Khalil Saeed leaving the city of Baltimore. And uh, my congratulations go out for a great career from Baltimore. Council President, I mean, um, Councilwoman Middleton. Um, I'd like us to do a moment of silence for Randolph Beard of the Ashburton community. He passed away and they had his funeral services uh, <clears throat> last week. He was 91 years old and a long time resident of the Ashburton community, lived on Cedardale and was very um, connected to in the uh, political world and also um, a retiree from the Baltimore City public school system. Chair recognize Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Clark, then Councilman Costello. I said Randolph, but it's Franklin. Uh, two things. Um, I'd also like to say how sorry I am that Khalil Zayed is leaving us to go west, um, but I wish him well. He's been a wonderful public servant, a man of integrity, calm, polite, respectful, efficient, effective. Um, you, you don't meet many anywhere of his, of his talent and his um, humanity and service. So I, I'm so, sorry to see him leave, but he'll be around for another few months, so I keep hoping maybe he'll change his mind, but I don't think so. I think they're throwing out their boots and their snow, snow things right now. Um, the other thing is, and I'm bringing a resolution in the next time we meet, which will be, I think, in a couple weeks. But we receive correspondence from a lot of people I have a lot of respect for. Uh, the director of the Hamden Family Center, um, a, a top officer in the employ of GEDCO, etc. And they are all, they are all local um, partners of um, the Fuel Fund of Maryland. Now, the Fuel Fund of Ma Maryland started right in this chamber, in that chair, with, Victor, with Councilwoman Victorine Q. Adams, and she had a, two elderly constituents who froze to death in their home <laughs> because they didn't have money to pay the B, G, and E and their oil. So she began the Baltimore City Fuel Fund, and it's a nonprofit, and it grew and it grew. It was so successful, and the B, G, and E company got involved. She could talk anyone into anything. She was a true, talk about a gentle lady, but she, with an iron fist under that velvet glove. And she had everybody lined up, including the gas and electric company, and it was, we were very successful. And then it was so successful that it went statewide. Now, when it got big, what happened was local agencies like the Hamden Family Center and Govins Ecumenical Development Corporation, etc., took on the partnership role of handling cases so that when people didn't have the money and they went to the fuel fund and they went to energy assistance, these local centers could sit down with them and say, okay, how are we gonna put the money together to get the bill paid to the oil company or the BGE and get you back with power and get you back with heat? And so what's happening is apparently the, the fuel fund of Maryland is saying that it is going to stop having partnerships and that people who want to apply for help 
will have to either go on the internet, really, or phone in. In other words, there won't be people in centers in counties or the city who are associated with the fuel fund that can begin to put all the pieces together for the people that are without their um, enough money to get heat and electric. So um, I have a lot more research to do on this, but there is a resolution that coming in. But I want you to know about it now while it's still chilly outside. God bless you. Um, so that when it does come in and it's, it's like 70 degrees, we understand that this is a year-round program and by the time it gets cold again, we need to have done something to put the pieces back together again. Thank you. Thank you. That is an important issue. Uh, Chair recognized Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President, and, and thank you to the mayor for joining us this morning for the um, uh, historic signing of a community benefits agreement between uh, State Center Neighborhood Alliance, which represents 12 neighborhoods, uh, and the developer. Um, I, I really appreciate it, and I know that the developer and the community does um, your unwavering support as well as the mayors and everyone else that, that joined us this morning. Uh, that development is an opportunity that is 50 years in the making to correct a mistake uh, that the state made uh, back in the 60s with the development of that project, splitting up nine different neighborhoods. Uh, the community has done their part. The developer has done their part. The city has done their part. Now it's time for the state to do their part so that we can move forward with that project. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Chair. Recognize Councilman Welch. Thank you, Mr. President. Council Lady, I, I refer you to my mom because I remember when Victorine, Willie, myself, and my mom sat at the dining room table at her house on Carlisle Avenue and gave birth to the idea of the Baltimore Field Fund. Amen. Wonderful idea, wonderful program. But Mr. President, they almost got me this weekend. They almost got me on one of those bikes, and I thank God for arthritis because I wouldn't, couldn't get my leg over. <laughs> but we went up to Pennsylvania this weekend, and we looked at the various configuration of dirt bike parks. And there is a thing called a trial, which is a competition, and the whole competition can take place in the room, in, in the space of this room. And it's a slow, deliberate, skilled, balanced competition, low speed, very little sound, and it mirrors what we do at a higher speed on asphalt in Baltimore City. They're looking at a design, we're gonna bring a trial project down to be temporarily housed in Baltimore for a day, just to show Baltimore dirt bike riders what it looks like, and it's something that can be easily built, it can be transported, it's a wonderful type of competition, and I want to invite you personally, Mr. President, to be a part of that uh, exhibit when we uh, do it. Your legs are better than mine, so we're going to invite you on one of the bikes, see, if, see what you look like. Uh, I see you shaking your head. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Chair recognized Vice President Ryan Singer. Mr. President, members of the council, the next city council meeting will be uh, held on Thursday, I repeat, Thursday, April the 7th at 5 p.m. in the Council Chambers, and I ask for a moment of silence for Franklin Beard and Peggy Berry. Thank you. There have been no further business. This concludes the 114th meeting of the 71st term of the Baltimore City Council. Thank you and good night. <laughs>